Hey, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rukhar Pradach. I want to give double honor to our apostles, who are elders who rule well, and blessings and salutations to you brothers out there teaching and enduring truth sincerity. Now, uh, I want to go over some um, a quick quick little lesson. It's not uh, it's it's some meat, but at the same time, this is some uh, well known uh, information. Or should be okay at this point, you know, uh, within the prophecies. Okay, so going into uh, Revelations chapter, Revelations chapter 12, verse 1. Okay, uh, and it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars so that that uh that woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet the sun moon and stars are known for knowledge wisdom and understanding okay which uh uh what the scripture says our wisdom and understanding the, the commandments are our wisdom in the sight of the nations so really that the knowledge wisdom and understanding is basically um the Lord breathing a breath of life into us, which is the law, statutes, commandments, and His will. Okay, uh, which makes us the uh, uh, most knowledgeable nation on planet Earth because we have the the one true knowledge, and that's a, uh, the knowledge of the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai. Okay, and that woman is rep representative representative of the nation of Israel. Okay, so we're gonna go as a, the crown of twelve stars. We're gonna go into Genesis chapter twenty-two. Uh, verse 17, okay? It says, um, in Genesis, Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, it says that in blessing, I will bless thee and, multi and multiply, uh, and, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed, uh, thy seed as the stars of, of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the sea, on the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So this, this here is just in reference unto us being um, referred to as the stars of heaven. Particularly, what it means is that we're going to be innumerable because you, you know, you look at the stars in heaven, it's hard, uh, you can't just count stars, so many of them. As people sit there and say they'll lay back and count stars, and you'll fall asleep doing it. Uh, but another, another great example to show that the stars, those 12 stars of the 12 nations of Israel, is when Joseph had his dream, and he had the dream that the, uh, the stars were bowing down unto him, and uh, uh, the brothers response was and even even Israel himself response was like we're not going to um we're not going to be bowing down to you basically right cuz they they knew they they uh, interpreted the dream that the stars were were them okay so when you go into that woman which is Israel the nation of Israel and the 12 stars bowing down i mean the 12 stars are, are crowned on her head is talking about the 12 tribes of Israel Okay. Uh, verse two it says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Her being uh, uh, with child uh, 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 and pain to be delivered is talking about Yahweh Shai, because it's evident that Yahweh Shai sprang out the tribe of what Judah. Okay, not through an immaculate conception, because if you are born only through a woman, then you wouldn't have a genealogy on a technical and biblical standpoint, because your gene goes through the sperma of the man, which is the seed. Okay, that's why in Matthew chapter one they tell you any type of any time you go into Chronicles, it's gonna name men after men after men. But all of a sudden, Yahweh Shai has a genealogy that goes back to David, but his his uh, his line stops at Mary. No, that's not the case. Matthew chapter one will tell you that. Okay, it says uh, verse three. It says, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, and that great red dragon represents uh, 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 Esau, um, Rome specifically, uh, Herod. Okay, um, so like, um, 
with the, the, the Great Red Dragon, I'm, I'm jumping the gun and, and getting a lot of things at once. The Great Red Dragon represents Esau. That Great Red Dragon also represents Rome and, and, and uh, the one that was trying to uh, execute Yahweh Shai represents Hera, okay? So in this one, uh, it represents that the Roman Empire and says having seven heads, which is that, that beast, which I can get the poster, but you got a uh, 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 German major, German minor, uh, uh, um, you know, you got Greece, Rome, Portugal, or Port the Portuguese, Spaniard, Is uh, Istanbul, uh, uh, um, uh, France, you know, and then it goes to the ten, the ten horns, uh, the seven heads is seven different Edomite factions, then the ten horns is the ten rulerships, okay, because in Revelation, specifically, damn Satan, in Revelation specifically in this chapter, it bounces around between going to Rome, between going to Herod, between going to Esau and itself, and uh, within the same chapter, from verse to verse, it'll bounce around, okay? So it says seven heads, which is with the, the seven heads, okay, or um, the seven heads are the nations, and the ten horns are NATO and the EU. So, see here. Get a precept real quick. Here, huh? having a hard time finding it or oh, getting to it for some odd reason, man. All right, um, so, um, so in, in, in where it says, uh, um, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, it says, And there appeared unto another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, which is. Uh, 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 Esau, um, specifically uh, the, the the great red dragon with the seven heads is talking about the Edomite nations, okay? With ten horns and seven crowns, uh, and seven crowns upon his head, we're talking about the NATO and the EU, okay? And when you go into Daniel chapter two verse forty one, it says, "Whereas thou sawest the the feet and toes part of powder's clay, the part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it." Of the um, of the strength of the iron, for as much thou sawest the iron mixed with the mired clay, that's talking about that the new kingdom. Let's get this here, which is America, which had that iron mixed in it, or you could say Great Britain, because Great Britain and America comes from the same the same uh, head as the uh, the wound that was daily healed, which was Rome. That's why it had that iron mixed with the clay. Okay, just giving an update and connection to it. It says, and his tail drew a third, third part of the stars of heaven. Okay, and um, when you when you read that, and you say the tails drew a third part of the stars. That is that is talking about Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, because in that time that Yahweh Shai was um, was was living, they were under the Roman persecution because that great red dragon at that particular time was the Roman Empire, right? And in that particular time, that, that great red dragon had a third of the stars, and also that great red dragon drew a third of the stars via through slavery also. But that third of the stars is talking about Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, okay? It says, and did cast them to the earth, okay? The being cast to the earth is basically to be made low because in Rome, uh, uh, the northern, the, the, the southern kingdom was low, and in America, the Southern Kingdom is low, okay? And the Northern Kingdom too, but the Northern Kingdom in the, uh, was in around in Babylon, um, not Babylon, but Rome, okay? Because uh, 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 via through Shalomanassar and Nebuchadnezzar and throughout the uh, Babylonian, ancient Babylonian uh, uh, captivity, the Northern tribe escaped uh, around the Cape of Africa going into South America. So the Lord stilled the waters in the, the South Africa and allowed the 10 tribes to uh, migrate to uh, South America, okay?
Okay, and says, uh, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered to devour her her child as soon as it was born. See that, that uh, uh, again, that dragon, not only is it Esau, not only is it Rome, but in particular, in that particular situation, that dragon was Herod because Herod sat on the throne uh, uh, on, uh, of Israel because uh, how Rome worked, Caesar, Julius Caesar was the, uh, uh, the ruler. And then you had uh, Pilate, which is you could say like a senate or, or a mayor. But when, when Esau, uh, specifically, they got this um, from the Greeks. When they took over, they didn't just destroy and say, I'm king. They allowed those countries to remain with their same customs and things like that. And they just paid tribute. So what happened was Herod was still on a throne ruling over Israel as a king. Like basically, he was sitting in the same seat that David sat in. Okay, but even though he was sitting in a power seat, they still were under Rome at that um in that particular time. It's just that the structure was not changed. It's just that Rome just put themselves over that structure. Okay, so Herod was the one that that uh, that it says, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be uh, ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born because her king herod did what he he, he was uh killing all the firstborn of the children of israel attempting to uh uh, uh destroy yahweh shai okay it says and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron not not a a, a feather or or, or um, a magic wand a rod of iron is used for for beating this, uh, 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 iron is a very hard metal, it's a very strong metal, and if you got a rod of iron, you can have a rod of gold if you wanted to, uh, you know, show off, or, or a rod of jasper, or things like that, but no, it's a rod of iron, that's a blunt object, okay, used to bash people in the head with, okay, uh, uh, see here, it says, uh, 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 in verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto the Most High and to his throne. And that was Yahweh Shai. How, is Shai, how is, did Yahweh Shai uh, 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 transcend to the spirit realm? He got caught up by, via through a chariot um, through proof that he was a cloud took him out of their sight. And there was two angels told, telling the disciples what? The same way he left is going to be the same way he came. Okay? Um, verse 6 it says And a woman fled into the wilderness Where she had half a place prepared Of the most high That she uh, that they fled That they should feed her For uh, a thousand and two hundred And three score days And uh, it says in, in Salakia and, and there was a war in heaven Michael and his angels Fought against the dragon And the dragon uh, His angels So so once you go into uh let's let's uh let's see here. I'm gonna go back into the old testament. So in Daniel 12 and 1 it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which uh, stand up for the, for the children of my people, the children of my people, it ain't talking about a war in heaven where Michael is fighting Satan and it's like a Star Wars epidemic, that's not the case. Michael is fighting for the angels, Michael and his angels which are, are, are messengers, you know what I'm saying, also actual angels are fighting against Satan and a, a, a physical offspring of Satan is Esau, okay? And, uh, but the point is, Michael and his angels is talking about, the angels talking about Israel, okay? It says, uh, for, for the children of my people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in a book. So there's going to be a time where uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, uh, the nation of Israel is going to, really go head up against Esau 
okay? And it's gonna be a, a, a all out war, uh, um, which Esau is gonna ultimately lose, okay? When he's talking about the chariot shall beam him out, the, and then Jacob with, and with e, um, Israel, he shall break in pieces the nations, and also with Israel he shall destroy uh, Edom, and going into the book of Ezekiel, okay? So we're gonna go into, a, 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 get another verse, real quick. So going into uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 31, I believe it's Isaiah 3 and 1, to make sure. But I, got, I got it in my notes here. So I'm gonna get, uh, I believe it's in Isaiah 31 and one through five, okay? It says, uh, woe to them that go down to Egypt and stay on, on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet uh, he also is wise and will bring evil and will not uh, call back his word, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not the most high, and their horses flesh and not spirit. When and uh, when the Lord have shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is helped shall fall down, and they all shall uh, fail together. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the um the young lion roareth in his prey on his prey when it, when the when a multitude of shepherds is called called forth against him he will not be afraid of their voice nor abase himself for the noise of them so shall the lord of hosts come down to fight for mount zion for the uh for the hill thereof as birds flying so will the lord of hosts defend jerusalem defending also he will de deliver it and passing over he will preserve it so in this particular case in revelations where it says uh and michael and there was a war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon in in, in isaiah chapter 31 uh all the way up to and one through five it's saying that that the uh, uh egyptians in that case is synonymous with esau all right and saying that the lord is going to come down and, and uh and fight for us and preserve preserve us the Yahweh Shai is Michael uh, 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 and um, basically the dragon in that particular case is Esau all right and, and uh, it says and the dragon fought and um, and the dragon fought and his angels okay so we're gonna get one more precept Right, uh, Matthew 24 and 30 it says and then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man uh, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth uh, one the end of the heaven to the other okay so Yahweh Shai and his angels are also going to which are the chariots are going to be fighting alongside uh, Israel and also the other nations are going to get involved okay uh, uh, so going on it says and prevail not neither 
so the dragon prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Because Esau is ultimately going to get utterly, utterly destroyed. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right? So I just want to get into that, man. Hopefully that was edifying. Uh, and want to say, call halal to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakar, Kadash, Barak, and Thumb, double honest high apostles, who are elders who rule well, and bless salutation to you, brothers, after teaching and enduring troops sincerity. Shalom.